Once again, it's on people. I am Brian Redman. This is the Relationship Rehab. And today we are gonna uh, finish up the series about cheating. Um, so I did the why do people cheat? Um, I've done the why do men cheat? And now it is time for why do women cheat? So, um, why do women cheat? Well, first of all, let me just say I got like really four points as to uh, why women cheat. Um, this is not the holy grail of, of women cheating, but this is just some things that I've uh, come across just by research, just by personal experience, and just talking to women, right? So, um, one of the first things that uh, came to mind um, was women cheat um, due to, I guess, needs not being met. So, we talk about needs not being met. What are those needs? You have uh, basically survival needs, that's one. So we're just talking about those basic, hey, you know, uh, resources, food, shelter, clothing, that kind of stuff. Just having those basic things that you need to survive, that's something that will, hey, have a woman cheat to make sure that she's getting those things. Um, which is, you know, that's basic necessities that we need, that, uh, that a woman needs as well. So um, two, I would say is emotional needs. Um, emotional needs, we're talking about the engagement um, in that relationship, the level of engagement, the type of engagement, um, whether it's healthy or not. At the end of the day, we all have needs, and when it comes to women especially, they have emotional needs that, that definitely need to be met. And that's one of the reasons why we are doing the relationship rehab is that we have to be able to connect emotionally, men and women alike, so that those needs can get met. Because when you don't have emotional needs being met, and that, that creates a, a, a void. And sometimes that void can be filled by other people, whether it's somebody at work, whether it's that close friend that's always hanging around, whatever the case may be, there's always a, a, a void that can be filled by someone else if you're not trying to fill that void or filling that void. Um, and also physical needs. Um, so sometimes when we're talking about that physical part of it, and just to keep it real, I mean, there is a physical need that we have as men and women. So whether if it's the aesthetic part of it, what's pleasing to the eye, how a person looks, um, or whether it's talking about, hey, how a person uh, feels as far as just having rock hard abs, if that's something that is, is, is very um, uh, sexually turns on a woman or something like that, if she's not getting that, it's something that she's gonna crave. Um, also too, when we're talking about just to keep it real and raw, when we're talking about size, you know, for uh, a lot of women, size does matter. So that whole myth of, oh, it don't matter, no, it, it does matter. And to a degree, it depends on what level it may matter to a particular woman or not. So, and that's feedback that I have gotten from women just talking about some of the reasons why they've cheated or why they've gone uh, elsewhere. When you have some of those needs not being met or none of those needs being met, and maybe one of those are, then that's definitely gonna swing things back to the way to where you wanna be able to say, well, this is why I'm gonna do what I'm doing because, hey, I'm getting this need back. So, um, part two, I would say, well, not part two, but uh, number two would be the greener grass thinking is what I call it. So, some people may even call it the 80-20 rule or something like that, but when a person or a woman thinks that, hey, things over here seem better, could possibly be better than where I'm at now because this person may have more resources than my partner does now, or this person may be able to promise me certain things or more things, bigger things, better things, whatever the case may be. There are some women that go for that. There are some women that want that. If you're with a guy and you can only shop at uh, The Gap, that's one thing, but if you have another guy who wants you and wants to be with you and you can shop at Louis Vuitton, hey, to some women, that is something that can make a difference at the end of the day. So a guy that has more resources than another guy could definitely man sway that woman to come over, especially if those other needs aren't being met or there are other deficiencies in that relationship too. So that's kind of like just a, another bullet point or another icing or some icing on the cake that could say, well, you know, this guy's not doing this and he's not doing that for me. And this other guy has can do that for me plus this, right? So um, I would say number three would probably be uh, promiscuous lifestyle, right? And this is men and women alike in the sense, I won't be foolish enough to say that this is only something that women do, but men do it as well. So when we're talking about a promiscuous lifestyle, um, just sometimes women have promiscuous lifestyles due to um, early sexual trauma in their life or um, some type of early sexual encounter that makes them oversex at the end of the day. So it's like somebody who is sleeping with multiple people, 
um, at, multi, at, at the same time in their life or they're jumping from one man to the next man or, or jumping from one pole to the next pole, if you will. If somebody's doing that, usually that's not necessarily just an, an inherited uh, uh, lifestyle or mindset that they have. It's because of some type of trauma. A lot of our women have been traumatized sexually at early ages in life and because they don't get any type of help to get through those type of things, Notice I said going through as opposed to getting over um, to go through that and deal with those issues. Then they establish some type of promiscuous lifestyle that makes them, you know, do things that, that normally they wouldn't do or do things to where they, they just don't care anymore. You know, it's like if something traumatic happens to you to the point to where you feel like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm in this position and I've been hurt this way. Or I've had this trauma and now I'm just going to do what I've been doing or I don't care anymore that happens because you haven't dealt with that trauma. So that's definitely something that is huge and I think that is overlooked is that we don't dig deep enough and we don't try to uh, engage in, in our relationships enough with women to find out exactly where they are uh, sexually and if they've been traumatized sexually. So um, that's definitely a, a, a major point to keep in mind as to why women cheat. Um, because once you've had that trauma, you have trust issues inherently. It's like you don't trust and therefore you can't truly lock in and you can't truly just give yourself to a man because you have that doubt and you have those trust issues and you can't commit fully like you need to be able to to have a healthy relationship. So um, the, I guess number four, I would say choosing safe over satisfied. And I, I it took me a, a good while to really bring this the right way. When we talk about choosing safe over satisfied, um, basically when you're in a, in a mindset of saying, I'm going to be with this guy because he's safe. Um, a lot of times you do that sacrificing what you truly want and what you are truly passionate about and the type of relationship you truly want to have. So you can meet somebody and that person can be very exciting, very engaging, could be, you know, just the, one of the best, uh, people that you know, you have a great time, but you don't want to give yourself to that person because that person is risky. That person has a, a, a level of danger, maybe be a little bit of a little bit of a bad boy. And because you don't want to put yourself in that situation where you, you may be hurt again, then you kind of kind of back up and say, well, I'm not going to necessarily marry this guy. I may just sleep with him and may just have some fun with him, but I won't marry this guy because this is somebody that I don't think I can maybe trust or just invest all of my time and resources into. So you'll go with the safe guy and going with that safe guy. It, it's, it's just that it's safe and it's OK. But you'll always have in the back of your mind like, man, you know, I, I remember how this guy used to be. and He used to do this to me and he used to take me here and we used to do all kind of just crazy stuff. It's like you still will have that urge for that and you will still have that wanting for that. So if, if you don't um, um, put yourself in a situation where you are choosing that safe, that satisfied part over safe, then you are always going to be thinking like, what if, or what if this happens or what if he doesn't, or what if he does? And you don't want to necessarily live like that. So you will choose that safe guy because you want that stability. You want that, you want to be comfortable those types of things. So, um, that's pretty much the, the, the main four points that I wanted to talk about with the women cheating. It can definitely, definitely go deeper. I just wanted to hit on a few just to lay out some groundwork and uh, depending on how this series may go, we may, you know, dive back into it and talk about some other things. Um, if you do, if you like this video, if you enjoyed this video, or if you know somebody who could benefit from it, share it, forward it, uh, subscribe it, like it. There is a thumbs up on this video somewhere. Go ahead and click that button and give me a thumbs up. If there's some feedback you got from it, I hated it, I didn't like it. Or you like, hey man, I liked it, it was good info. Leave me a comment or something. You know, I'm always in a position where I'm open to getting better. I'm in a position, I'm always open to the idea of learning something different from you guys. So it's like, let's uh, just keep engaging in the, in the conversation. Let's go ahead and keep growing. Cause at the end of the day, all of this is just so that we can all become better versions of ourselves. I'm Brian Redman. This is the Relationship Rehab and I'm out.